Uh, Joe Biden has been making the rounds lately, apologizing for being Joe Biden. He still hasn't announced he's running in 2020, but there's been a lot of speculation, of course. And when he does, he could pick Stacey Abrams as his running mate. Of course, you remember Miss Abrams. She lost the governor's race in Georgia last year, and she threw cold water on that idea when she was asked about it today. Stacey? I think you don't run for second place. I, I think my responsibility oh, that is, is a good answer. Wow. <laughs> I like that. So, if I'm going to enter a primary, then I'm going to enter a primary. That's right. Abrams did say that down the road, if Biden were to win the nomination and then ask her to be his VP, she would consider it at that point. In other words, an election loser is, for some reason, dictating the terms. But Abrams said she thinks that ultimately the left will nominate either a woman or a minority candidate in 2020. Is that what it will take to beat Trump and Pence? Let's go to tonight's panel from the Greg Gutfeld Show, where she serves as correspondent and a reporter for National Review Online. Kat Timph is here, along with former State Department spokesperson and co-host of Benson and Harp on Fox News Radio, the ultimate Buckeye. Marie okay. Harp is back. <laughs> An attorney and executive director at the Lawfare Project, Brooke Goldstein, on a Wednesday. It is a super hot lady panel, and I love all of you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, so I think this whole idea that Joe Biden is going to fix all of his problems with Stacey Abrams is a little bit offensive. What do you think about that? It's incredibly offensive. If someone ever asks me to be their running mate, which, let's be real, definitely going to happen someday. <laughs> And then I realized the narrative was that I was being chosen because I checked the right identity boxes and not because of my talent, brilliance, et cetera. I would be very offended by that. I understand that in many, to many Democrats, being a white guy, a white straight guy, is mm -hmm. the worst thing you can possibly be. There's However, no doubt about it. However, this is not pro-feminism by saying, okay, let's nominate a woman. It's anti-feminist because it's saying that I wouldn't just nominate the best person for the job who might happen to be a woman. Yeah, and, and I think Stacey Abrams is right to say, if I'm going to run, I'm going to yeah. run. All right, I don't need your charity, Joe. And I also don't think this was ever something Joe Biden was really considering. I think this is something that pundits thought he should consider, like this one-term pledge. I also don't think that's something no real. Presidential candidates do, though, pick vice presidents to compensate for something they don't have. Sure. Donald Trump picked Mike Pence because he needed help with evangelicals and the base. Right? George H.W. Bush picked Dan Quayle because of his dreamy blue eyes and his Midwestern background. Also, both of those things. Mm -hmm. um, no, but, but I think that it was never a real suggestion, and it was stupid. And I don't think that someone like Joe Biden would accept either the premise of one term or picking a VP up front because it would indicate that he needed something extra. He needed a gimmick. Or that he doesn't believe in himself. Oh, right, or that he needed a gimmick. And mm -hmm. he was the vice president for two terms. He is a formidable candidate. I think a number of... Is he of your guy? Uh, no, he's not my guy. I like him. I think he could win. Who's your guy or gal? I have a couple. I really like Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. I really like Mayor Pete. Mm. I really, I really like Mayor Pete I, I still have to see more from him because this whole Supreme Court thing, the, the Beto he's really cribbed. he's really smart. And, and not he's, impressed with he's that he's at all. Getting, I've been talking to college students. I was at an Indiana University actually last Woo! week. I've been teaching this semester. Oh, students, mm -hmm. not just in Indiana, but students are really fired up by Mayor Pete for mm -hmm. some reason, which I find he's very like, He's like a smarter Beto with a more interesting exactly. life story who doesn't yes. go on a nonstop apology to her. Does Donald Trump beat Stacey Abrams if she does, in fact, run and get the nomination? Yeah, I, I have to say, I don't think Donald Trump is stepping down now with the reports that there's no collusion. Everybody said that he was going to resign. Um, I think he's going to get reelected. Mm -hmm. But I, look, I, I disagree with Stacey Abrams on her policy. I think actually that she is qualified. I think she's extraordinarily smart. She's a Yale graduate. She's a lawyer. She's a small business owner. She served 10 years in, in the Georgia legislature. But her emphasis on race and ethnicity, I think, harms her. She went on a radio show recently. She said, I'm, people don't think I'm viable because I'm a black woman with natural hair. Actually, I think it's the opposite right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a double-edged sword in the sense that you want people to vote for you because of your policies, not because of your ethnicity, not because of your hairstyle or, or your skin color or whatever. And she should be judged on her policies. She has an impressive record yeah. on the one hand. And on the other hand, she's done a lot of shady things. She campaigned with Linda Sarsour, mm -hmm. who's connected to people. Oh, th that woman is, okay. uh, is nuts. And, and, and she's bad gonna, news. Yeah, she's, she's real bad news for Ilhan Omar and Rashida mm -hmm. Tlaib. Uh, and I think Stacey Abrams didn't do herself 
a lot of favors by holding off on the concession for as long as she did because I think there are people that look at that kind of behavior on the national mm -hmm. stage and say, come on, man, we've had enough a of little, this. A little Hillary immature. Clinton has but, been on the nonstop. acting like race and gender don't matter and don't play a role in politics and how people vote is putting your head in the sand. No, they there do. Is an, there is I, I don't think she's saying it no, doesn't no, matter, and, but, and, but and is, that, is that yeah. the most but critical thing? She, about someone, but acting like people should vote be... for whoever they think has the best policies is no, naive. At that. I, I, yeah, if, if that were the case, that they would have all voted for Of course, it should be. But they're going to keep the talking. World. The panel returns too. after the break. Most Democrats the right are now. finally dialing back the impeachment talk, or are they? Some still demanding the president's removal, and they are potentially gift wrapping the 2020 election for him. That is next. To win, to see how things turn out. If you apply some pressure, I like to win. Let's apply some pressure. Democrats gambled and lost pretty big on the Mueller report, but now some of them want to go double or nothing and bet the whole farm on impeachment just a couple hours ago. Michigan freshman Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and Texas Congressman Al Green mm, unveiled a resolution to investigate whether President Trump committed impeachable offenses. Watch. It is about whether or not we are going to allow on our watch, this is our watch, whether we will allow on our watch the Constitution to be subverted and an unfit president to remain in office. Nah, I still need some more specifics. Whose watch is it? Now, keep in mind, Green and Tlaib are ignoring their own party leadership calls to back off the impeachment talk. So will Democrats shoot themselves in the foot again by going down this road, the panel is back. Kat Marie and Brooke, uh, is this the smartest move? I know why Al Green and Rashida Tlaib are doing this. They're in safe districts, and their their base, their constituents, they love it. They can't get enough of it. But I don't think they're going to get the numbers on their side to to really go for a full impeachment vote, especially this week. I, I agree. And you heard Democrats in 2018, the way we, my party, won the House, was not talking about Russia, was not talking about impeachment, was talking about health care. I mean, watching that interview you did with Kaylee McEnany about health care, Democrats will compete on that issue every day of the week, every hour, every minute. That's what they're running on in 2020. Mm -hmm. You'll have folks out there raising these concerns. And look, just because the Mueller report, according to Barr, we haven't seen it yet, says there was no criminal collusion or conspiracy, right? Collusion is not a, a technical term, legally. Um, I do think there's a lot of corruption that deserves to be investigated in this administration. Mm -hmm. I think that Donald Trump has behaved in unethical mm -hmm. and, and uh, corrupt ways, and I think that it's Congress's job to investigate that. But we're not going to run on that in 2020, and I don't think he's going to get impeached. Brooke? This is, I mean, it just looks like a publicity stunt at this point. And I think what's so scary is that they put themselves out there as judge, jury, and executioner. It's not like they're coming out and saying, well, there's more evidence. Let's see what happens. And if something, you know, bad comes to play, then we'll deal with it then. They're saying Imagine impeach, impeach, impeach. It undermines the office of the president, undermines democracy. And, and they don't want that for when a Democrat is in office. Right. But it's, you know, it's the same thing as holding a rally and chanting lock her up or build the wall. I was just going to say that. It's the exact same thing as saying lock her up. It gets people <laughs> fired up. They love it. I don't know. It's just, you know, politicians sometimes, they just say stuff for political reasons. <laughs> you know, like Al Green, he is no dummy. Not to give him, like, too lofty of a compliment, but I don't think he's a <laughs> dummy. I think he knows that they don't have the votes to put this through if they tried not. to. It's the safest and thing that, in the world for him And to that do. it would be awful if they tried and then it didn't go through, and that would politically help Trump. So mm -hmm. Trump, if I were Trump, I'd say, yeah, go for it. Yeah, he's probably he's donating shot. money to Al Green's re-election campaign yeah. as we speak. I would. Impeachment and impeachment talk is the best thing for this president. I've said it a million times. Thank you so much. Brooke, Thank Marie, you. and Kat. Yay! Ladies night. Oh, Topical Storm is next. Stay here. Do it.